um, who I'll introduce in just a moment, as well as some other CEOs to talk about their experience building partnerships. So today is part one of understanding and appreciating the capacities of the community and a focus on relational and practical partnerships. And we will have a part two in March with the date to be determined. You can all see, good. All right, well, thanks Bethany for the intro um, and uh, appreciate everybody joining us here on this blustery day, at least, uh, here um, where I'm at. Um, and uh, today I'm really excited. We're, we're gonna have what I hope is for everybody a really practical discussion um, about uh, understanding, appreciating capacities in community. And um, this is part one. This is gonna be a two-parter as we were talking with our, um, our uh, community members, uh, Jamie and Ramona, um, who, um, our community advisors for this series, we, we really decided that this deserved more than just one session. Um, so we're gonna start off with, Bethany's gonna go through some, some, uh, some didactic slides here. Um, and then we've got Jamie and Ramona who will be joining us as part of our panel along with Leslie Wright and Lorenzo Ramirez who are part of our um, CCTSI community engagement, community research liaisons, and they do a lot of work, um, particularly with our pilot uh, grant awardees that are focused on community engagement and partnership development. So thanks everyone. And Bethany, I'm gonna pass it back to you. Thank you. So as we begin this time together today, we wanted to acknowledge the critical role of partnerships in community engaged research. And you can see a, a number of different frameworks that have been proposed to guide the process of public participation, stakeholder engagement, citizen participation, really all the way back to 1969 and this ladder of citizen participation that shows partnership as one of the highest levels of uh, participation and engagement in research. And so no matter what sort of approach you're taking to working with communities, working with stakeholders in the process of your research, the culminating relationship is around this notion of partnership. And so we wanted to start with a thought question um, around what does partnership mean to you? And, and so I've asked Jamie and Ramona to think about this a little bit. And so I wanted them to jump in briefly and share their thoughts. But then also in the chat, if you would indicate maybe just a few words around what partnership means to you. So Jamie, do you want to say a little bit about kind of what you think of when, when someone says, do you want to join me in partnership? Sure. Thank you, everybody, for joining us today. Um, when I was given this question to think about, um, partnership to me looks a lot different than it did when I first started doing my community engagement projects. Um, when we think of partnership, you right away think you just, you know, you remember back in grade school when the teachers say, find your partner, we're going to go here or there. Sometimes it's not always the smoothest ride with that person, no matter where you're going. So partnerships to me have to be invested in and take time um, to make sure they're the right fit. And um, when you're working on initiatives in your life, personal life, business, nonprofit realm, um, they got to be treated with some, some clarity in the beginning and, and make sure what you're looking for exists in, in a lot of these um, other pieces that, um, that you deal with along the ride. Thank you, Jamie. And Ramona, how about for you? What does partnership mean for you? For me, partnership is building a team. Uh, we can't do any of our research if we're not all on the same page. So the idea of building a partnership involves giving everybody the opportunity to grow together and understanding that when this begins, we're all on a learning curve. Absolutely, thank you. And so I love the contributions in the chat here. Um, I, I see the concepts of collaboration of coming, uh, coming up multiple times. Um, this notion of a mutual relationship where each person can share and listen, have a shared outcome, shared goals, shared purpose, um, having mutual benefit, reciprocity, co-creation and co-learning, shared power, equal contributions. Um, I like 
Emma Gilchrist's idea here of shoulder to shoulder, you're in it together. Um, in Karen's point about creating understandings, mutual understanding of what it is that we're trying to accomplish, equal contributions, this equity concept is coming up a lot. Um, sharing of ideas and perspectives to broaden experiences. I, I really like Diana's notion of broadened experiences here that we can see and experience more together than we can apart. Um, shared goals, shared power, trusting each other and willingness to grow together. And I did, I looked it up in the dictionary and there are actually quite a few definitions of what it means to be a partner. Uh, and, and they talked about someone who participates in an activity or game with another person. And certainly research can be fun like a game, but it uh, also can be very serious work together. Uh, the, this idea of a relationship came up a lot as well as working or doing business together and having specified joint rights and responsibilities. And I really liked how this dic dictionary definition reflected what we've talked about with our partners, um, who, with Jamie and Ramona, who helped us with planning this series, that there's both a relationship in having a partnership, how you get, how you communicate and work with, the, with another person, as well as the practical aspects of how you get work done together, how you're clear about roles and responsibilities, as well as I like this joint rights concept that you both are equal in your rights and responsibilities. Uh, this IAP2, International Association for Public Participation, Spectrum of Public Participation, is a really nice framework for thinking about how you are engaging stakeholders and community members in the process of research. And what you see here is uh, from left to right, the spectrum ranges from less involvement of your stakeholder or community partners in the process of research and decision making, all the way up to fully empowering um, the public, your community members to make final decisions. And so starting from inform, the idea here is that your stakeholders are um, engaged in the process of, of receiving balanced and objective information to assist them in understanding. So that concept of understanding came up in some of the, the ways that you all think about um, what constitutes partnership. And then moving up to a little bit more involvement in decision making is this consultation phase. So this is obtaining feedback on the analysis, alternatives or decisions. I often think of this as I'm getting input. I'm, I want to make sure that I'm not really far off track, but I'm not actually involving uh, my stakeholders in the process of research and just making sure that I'm not way off track with something. And then in the middle, this involved stage, working directly with the public throughout the process to ensure public concerns and aspirations are consistently understood and considered. This gets to be more of a longitudinal relationship that you're building. Um, and then my, my um, I really get excited once we get up to this collaboration level. And this is where the word partner starts to become uh, more obvious. So to partner with the public in each aspect of the decision, including development alternatives and identification of the preferred solution. So we see this partnership starts to become important at higher levels of engagement and decision making. So as I mentioned, as we prepared for this forum, we thought really, if I'm going to begin a partnership, if I'm going to reach out and establish uh, a relationship with members of the community, members of the public in the context of doing research, there's both relational aspects as well as practical aspects. And so what did we hear about uh, as we were planning for this call today around the relational aspects of partnership building? So we heard that both community and academic partners need to mutually decide, is this someone you want to develop a relationship or an association with? And how do you know? How do you know if this is going to be a good relationship? How do you know if it's going to be a good fit? So as you go about finding your partners, as an academic partner seeking a community partner, you want to be asking yourself, who are the people with a lived experience, expertise, with a particular health condition or issue that need to have input 
on what the research entails. Um, what are you going to prioritize? How are you going to do this research? How will you make sure what's learned in the research gets delivered back to those who participate? And then think about who are the trusted members of a community or an organization with relevant roles and connections that would be good to partner with, that they, that they have a, an influence in the community, that they know kind of what the strengths and assets and needs are within those communities. For the community partners seeking academic partners, we've heard uh, there's a community partner who has a need, who says, oh, this is an opportunity to do research I'm looking for an academic partner to help me with this process. Be thinking about what types of academic expertise or skills do you need? What types of resources or funding opportunities would be suitable? There are certain types of research activities that are, be that are better suited for funding through like a National Institutes of Health or in some types of funding that are better suited for maybe foundation funding or something like that. It really depends on what you want to accomplish. And then what's that academic partner's experience or reputation for partnering with communities? Are they going to be a good partner? Are they going to share that decision-making and that power and see you as an equal partner um, and, and have you each move towards growth in the research together? Some other important relational principles in partnership building is knowing that relationships take time, that they're not always perfect right off the bat. However, you're approaching the process with a commitment to communication, transparency, and respect for mutual expertise, that you're open to change and evolution of the relationship, that where you start may not be where you end. And then finally, I know I am often uh, making mistakes, and I hope that my community partners forgive me um, and vice versa. We also talked about, well, how do you end a partnership? Uh, and sometimes there's natural evolutions in a project or changes in circumstances that mean this partnership isn't, isn't working anymore or it isn't needed anymore or people are going in different directions. Uh, and, and then also sometimes maybe they're just the feeling isn't there that this partnership isn't working, that you're not achieving your mutual goals or that your goals have changed. And that's okay. From a practical perspective, how do we actually approach the work together so that we're getting things done? And the, the first thing that comes up routinely is the importance of setting clear expectations about the project goals and the respective roles and expectations for those who are contributing to the collaboration. We've also heard a lot about the importance of respect for time and expertise. Number one is clearly stating and adhering to time commitments. If you say, I need one hour of your time, then you take one hour of their time. Uh, we also need to be very careful about meeting uh, locations and scheduling, going to where the community is, making our meetings be at a time and place that makes it easy for our partners to contribute. When we have a meeting, make sure we have an agenda with a clear objective. Going along with having clearly stated project roles and responsibilities and, and time commitments, having an established scope of work and fair compensation for um, that time and effort. And then finally, to be prepared for your meetings and your engagements together and use the time wisely. Other practical aspects of partnership building, uh, both relational and practical, is openness to change in the path of the research. And here, here's a, some pictures from an early icebreaker activity, getting to know you activity. Uh, you can see Ramona there in the pink and black dress um, from a project that we started a couple of years ago. Um, and, and so what was really important here is to engage with our partners early in the research planning process to make sure that even what we were studying was something that was of importance to our stakeholder partners. Being flexible in all aspects of how we work together and how we make decisions. The world can change um, in a moment, as we've learned a lot in the past year and a half, almost two years now. And so expecting the unexpected and being prepared to change and being flexible in how you work together and how the research goes. Uh, and then finally, there's practical aspects of how we get to know each other. And so there are some really great resources on the web and through experiences of our colleagues on campus here and in the communities around good icebreakers and how we go about appreciating expertise, the strengths and assets of our communities. 
um, and growing that partnership through these, these very practical ways of, well, how do I get to know someone? Um, how do we do that partnership to, in relationship development? And so there's a, a few resources. We'll have these available on the slides for you to review another time. I wanted to put them out here. Um, on, there's different ways of uh, constructing conversation. I really like this Liberating Structures website. There's lots of really good practical tips on how to structure a conversation. Our DiceMethods.org website lists um, a wide variety of different stakeholder engagement methods. This arthritis research, it looks like it's about arthritis research, but it's really not. Um, it's about uh, patient engagement in research and some really fantastic guides on different steps to consider in building a partnership. So definitely encourage you to take a look at that. Um, there's also some really nice resources on the PCORI website as well. Uh, and so as we move towards our panel discussion today, I just wanted to note that the CCTSI's uh, Partnership Development Award um, as part of their Community Engagement Pilot Grant Program is specifically geared towards developing relationships between academic and community partners. And so the cycle for this, this current year has already passed, but it's good to keep in mind for the future for next summer, um, that this is an opportunity for funding to uh, just a little bit of support usually to help establish these partnerships and engage early in the process of planning research so that you're focusing your research efforts on um, on the, the problems and, and outcomes that matter most to your community members. So um, we, we really have a, a very nice panel gathered here today of people with a lot of experience in partnership development and I'm so glad to welcome them. So we have Jamie Dominguez, who is a community research partner based in Alamosa, Colorado. Ramona Corin, who's a community research partner based in Lakewood, Colorado. Um, Leslie Wright, who is a CCTSI community research liaison, as well as Lorenzo Ramirez, also a CCTSI community research liaison. Um, and Leslie and, and Lorenzo are uh, both coaches and mentors for people who receive the community engagement pilot grants to help you in the process of developing partnerships and conducting research in partnership with community members. And so I'm so glad to welcome all of you here today. And I'm gonna stop sharing my slides so we can see all of you. All right. Okay. And so we wanted to give everyone a little bit of a chance to introduce themselves and say a little bit about kind of your, uh, a brief history of your participation and engagement in uh, the process of partnership development and research. So I'm gonna start um, with Lorenzo. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Lorenzo Ramirez. I'm a community research liaison. I work primarily in the urban Latino communities of Metro Denver, also Aurora. We've been expanding out into the Pueblo area also over the last few years. And uh, as a community research liaison, I wear many hats, uh, which was is what makes the uh, job very, very exciting and challenging at times, but that's the exciting part of it. And I've been doing this, uh, this past November will be 13 years. So I've been around for quite some time and have been working in community way beyond the 13 years. Uh, the community, not only that I work in, but that I also live in. So uh, that's me. And Leslie. Hey everybody, thank you for joining us today. I um, hope you don't get blown away during this session. Um, I'm Leslie Wright. I work at my home base is Kaiser Permanente, Colorado, in the Institute for Health Research. Um, with my CCTSI work, I'm uh, really privileged to be a community research liaison. Um, my focus communities uh, include the lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, queer community, um, focusing mostly Metro Denver, but expanding out a little bit, um, as well as uh, the Kaiser Permanente members and clinicians. I do a lot of patient engagement um, and patient partnership work. So um, yeah, and like Lorenzo, we're the old guards. We've been around um, CCTSI for 13 years, I guess. Um, and it just keeps getting better. So that's all, thanks. Mona. Hi, everyone. Um, I am a patient engagement uh, partner for healthcare. 
I've uh, been involved in uh, patient advocacy with the FDA. I did a couple of uh, projects with the University of California, Davis. Um, I've also been involved in several projects with the University of Colorado, which is home base for me. Uh, I very much enjoy this work. Uh, I'm going to brag a little bit. I think I'm good at it. I hope so, because I put my heart and soul in there. So welcome, everybody. I'm so glad you could join us today. Ramona is good at this. I'm going to ask a little bit more about what makes you good at this, um, what people should be looking for in a good community partner in a little bit. Um, and last but not least, Jamie, introduce yourself for us. Hello, my name is Jamie Dominguez. I'm home based out of Alamos, Colorado, and my community engagement initiative started 10 years ago with my car club and just giving back to my community. And along the way, I realized how important it is that we start healing our communities um, from a cultural perspective and what that looks like with collaborating with academic partners, which is a totally, um, I think, new concept that we need to um, coast through and look at it real close and, and develop more of these partnerships because it's important. We both need each other to, to heal from the inside out. So we do have a few questions prepared for today, but we really want the audience to participate and ask questions. So any questions you have about partnership development or anything else related to doing community engaged research, really anything is, is open, whatever you need today, um, please put your questions in the chat um, and we can facilitate there. But let's start with a couple of our prepared questions as people think about what they would like to know. So um, really for any of our panelists, but we specifically thought maybe Jamie and Ramona would have some thoughts is, how do you know if an academic partner or team is going to be a good fit for you? What are you looking for when someone invites you to say, can you be my community partner? Can you be my patient partner on this project? How do you decide? So maybe we can start with Jamie. Um, in my experience, I think there's a commitment involved even just reaching out to somebody and with scheduling being as crazy as it is with all of us and us knowing how hard it is to accommodate the work when the repetition is, is it shows when they keep reaching out, they keep seeking you out no matter what, nothing gets in the way, I think of an, of an initial partnership, no matter how busy we are, you always seem to make contact with these um, people or, or funders or community members, it, it, it almost organically just happens most of the time. If, if it's a good natural partnership for me, that's what I look for, that regular issues don't get in the way. Like if it needs to be done, we, we, we figure out how to communicate, even if it's just for a split second. <laughs> Ramona, how about you? How do you decide if there's someone you wanna partner with? Well, first of all, I need to know, do I have experience with the research question? If I don't have experience, I'm not going to be of help to anyone. Uh, and then second of all is who's involved? What's their experience working with stakeholders? Is there some way that I can help inform them, um, not just for whatever the research is, but uh, help us both get along in the project and so I guess I need somebody who's going to be open first of all to having community partners um, so that's where I would start and Lorenzo or Leslie when you work with community members in particular do you advise them on how they go about deciding to work with a particular academic partner and, and what are you looking for what, what should they be looking for Lorenzo Sure. Uh, yeah, my experience in the past has been, uh, and I can think of one particular organization, they were absolutely brand new to research. They're actually a school. So, uh, but they had such great ideas. And, uh, and it was kind of my job, and that's what liaisons do. We make that connection between community and potential research and potential partners. So, um, Knowing uh, we we live in two worlds. We live in our community, of course, work in our community, but we also live in the research world, the academic world. And uh, so for me, what 
what has worked, what has been very effective is um, re potential researchers that actually show up in community. They're visible in community, even though they haven't partnered yet. So it's, it makes it a little bit easier to, to connect with community. Well, you know, this person, they were at this event, or let me introduce you to this person, maybe at a community event. So visibility is very important, especially for community. And, um, and the level of involvement that a potential partner may want to be uh, with community. Some of them may have started to work in community, but just need that that, that strong connection or are brand new. And that's where liaisons can be very effective in connecting them with community. And then also uh, the researchers' interests, you know, why, what is their motivation to work within community? Because community, um, my community in particular, uh, we, when I started doing this work, uh, I do it on, uh, basically my guiding principles are the CBPR, Community-Based Participatory Research uh, principles really kind of keep me on track. I've been able to educate my community about CBPR. It's a whole different approach to doing research, but also uh, I had to do a lot of healing. There was a lot of uh, mistrust in community for a lot of very valid reasons, allowing community to, to share those, those issues in a safe environment. And I think that started the healing there. And letting them know we're going to, we'd like to do this. I have some researchers that may be interested in working with you, but we're going to approach this differently. And we go back to the principles of CBPR, community-based participatory re research has been very helpful. But I think it, uh, when you're able to utilize the liaison, it makes it a little bit easier because we do live in both worlds and we can kind of, kind of work through some of the uh, trust issues or kind of help that along. But at the same time, we also know that we're going to have to step back once that partnership starts to, to uh, mature a little bit. But we're always there to provide support. Leslie, how about for you? What, what do you advise community members on and what they should be looking for in an academic partner? Yeah, thanks. Um, a lot of what Lorenzo and, and, and Ramona um, and Jamie said is really true. I think... Um, when I'm thinking, when I'm working with an organization, if an organization um, wants to connect with an academic researcher, um, one of the things that's really critical, I think it's for both, because I've seen this um, happen very recently, that it's not just the organization itself, um, but it's the, the, the often the, it's the people, the organization is trying to impact, to help, um, that needs to also be involved. So the organizations are pretty usually good at that, like reaching out into their constituents or their clients or their communities. Um, academics are sometimes less good at that. So for me, partnership is um, the community organization and the, and the researcher, but really wanting to take the time to include the people we're trying to impact. Um, you know, whatever the, you know, if it's a condition or, um, and, and not to lose sight of the fact that everybody has lived experience. So they obviously have something to contribute and taking the time to get to know the folks we're trying to impact, um, to invite them to the table, to invite them to, from the beginning of the research to the end is really critical. We've been, we're, this is a perfect time for this because we're just, um, reviewing uh, a lot of the pilot grants, um, the partnership development and the joint pilot grants. And I've seen several um, joint pilot grant applications that don't involve the people that we're trying to impact, right? Um, and that's really critical. And so then the parallel question is, okay, I really do want to do this. I really want to involve community members in my research, but I have never done this before. How do I find someone? Like where, where are people and how do I find them? And how do I figure out who would be a good community partner? And, and so I thought maybe Jamie and Ramona could start by saying, where did we, where did we find you? Where did we, where did we first meet you? Uh, and, so tell us a little bit about that experience. Let's start with Jamie. 
where did we first meet you? Well, it was with one of my work partners that I know here in the community. She introduced me to um, CU staff and she, the connection there, which is the most important is she knew that I was doing stuff in my community that they might not have ever been able to see, but because of where she was in her position, both acad her academic position and personal life, she was able to make this um, connection with us. And right there is the most important piece because the work I do, if I didn't have any academic backing, I would probably be way, way further behind. You know, it takes both of us to, to trust, you know, like Lorenzo said, the trust thing, we have to trust that they have our best interests and the academic partner has to trust that we have a good foot to start off and address some of that stuff because the people that are trusting us who we represent our population it's just so much trust along the whole timeline so one wrong kink in the chain can jeopardize the whole the whole um partnership um because you know in my position i have to talk to my community members, my, my, my populations that I reach out to who are stigma to the point where academic um, pieces that are associated with society right now are stigma bad. And, and some of them are, are systematically um, put into places where, that hinder populations like the ones I represent. So we not only have to be trustworthy, but we have to break down barriers at the same exact time. And, and a lot of these barriers, people think they can't be influenced, persuaded, or changed because they've been in existence for decades. So it, it's, it's really a true, genuine trust thing that, that we have to work together to say, okay, I, I, even if it's not how it looks, how we want it to look in the end, we have to trust that what we're doing is going to change something. Because we know planning never really unfolds how it should, but all the magic happens from the beginning to this point, no matter what it looks like, whether it unfolds organically or it falls out, you know, we have to trust that all the relationships and trust stuff that happens in between is where the magic and the change happens because we have to ch knock down barriers and we have to trust that I have, you guys have to trust me that I have the capability to do that. And I have to trust that you're going to be there with me with this ride. You know, because this is what you do, academia. That's what you do. And this is what we are experiencing. So the two pieces, I think, work um, like a dance together. Ramona, how about you? Where, where did we find you? Well, I had just got diagnosed with diabetes, and I was invited to attend uh, what we call the boot camp translation event. And basically, there were all of these professionals looking at 12 patients and going, what do you think you need? So I'm not shy, so I didn't have any problem addressing that question. And then I stuck around to be part of a steering committee, which led to the grant, which began our project uh, invested in diabetes. So I got there by invitation. And I did want to add to earlier about what I look for. It's also a question of, is it something I want to learn? Yeah. And so can you say a little bit more about who invited you to this boot camp event? Well, I had gone to what they call the quote education class, which, you know, it uh, involved getting a meter and a cartoon book, but I interacted with the lady so a couple of weeks later, she sent me an email and said, hey, we've got this thing going on. I think you would be really good. Would you like to attend? So it was the health educator at uh, Stride Clinic that I go to. Great. And, and so in both of your cases, it was some sort of academic partner knew someone who then knew you. And so there was a sort of chain of, of connections there. And, and so I, I wanna ask the same question to Leslie, is what do you advise academic uh, researchers who are seeking community partners? How do I find someone to help? Yeah, um, 
so I, I yeah, as as Lorenzo said, my foot is both in the academic and the and the community um, partnership world. Um, I'll give you a really good example that happened in this last project I worked on. Um, I was as as myself, I was at a, a fundraising event for um, uh, one of the organizations that I work with, uh, one Colorado, and um, we were just at a house party, and I met this woman who just said she really wanted to contribute um, to the, the community and also to, uh, she was an older lesbian and also to the, the healthcare of older lesbians. And I just happened to have been working um, on trying to put together a partnership for a grant that was um, related to older lesbians and what their healthcare needs are. And so while we're at this party, I just kind of mentioned, I said, hey, I'm helping to form a stakeholder group. Do you think you might be interested? And um, so we connected, I connected her with the investigator of the project. Um, we did a, an interview just to make sure it felt like it would fit for both of, both of them and for the team. And I'll just read you this really quick where the project has ended, but um, I had this wonderful uh, note from her. She says, honestly, Leslie, I need to thank you for hearing me at that gathering of the Lakewood lesbians and for including, including me in the cab, you listened, you found a solution. I'm incred incredibly grateful for that. Um, and so I think it's just, it's really being whatever, wherever you are, it's kind of living, living the person that you are and, under, and looking for those opportunities, those unintended consequences, the opportunities to, if you listen to people and be out in community, um, as an academic researcher, remember you are all part of communities. You know, we we have we all have many many hats, which presents presents us with many many opportunities. But you've got to create the relationship first. Mona said, "Don't be shy." Lorenzo, what do you think? What do you advise people who are looking to develop community partnerships? Well, uh, I'm going to share with you all. Um, most of the partnerships that I helped develop or was part of that them uh, becoming a partnership. Most of the academic uh, partners went through the Colorado Immersion Training and Community Engagement Program, CIT is what we call it through CCTSI. It's a wonderful program. And uh, we offer that yearly and researchers can apply to be in the program. And uh, we have different tracks every year. We, this past year, we just did the Urban Latino track. We did the... Uh, Eastern Plains track with another uh, community research liaison. And then we did a new track uh, out of part, uh, 2040 Partners for Health in Aurora. And what the CIT program is all about is bringing researchers into communities that they potentially wanna work with. So it's a great concept. And over the years, we've been able to fine tune it. Most of the, all the partners that I was able to partner with community actually visited some of the community-based organizations during the actual immersion week. It's a six, six, month, uh, six month commitment, but there's one week where you're actually in, in whatever community you want to, to work with. You're there for a week. And uh, we go around, we introduce people to the movers and shakers, to gatekeepers of community organizations, but they're all potential partners. So it's a wonderful way to kind of get in to community. Uh, that's one way of doing it. And so I highly recommend anyone that's interested, uh, they'll be doing another series of, of the, uh, the CIT program this in 2022. I know the Eastern Plains will be a part of it. We're trying to do two years at a time. Uh, so the Latino uh, track, we did two years, so we won't be, it won't be offered this year, but there'll be some new tracks primarily uh, maybe in the Native American community, African American community, Asian community, we have CRLs, uh, community research liaisons and all those communities. Uh, so I highly say, uh, recommend that you check into that and apply to, to be a part of that. Um, also, um, when I'm working with partner potential partnerships, it's, it's really getting to know both the researcher and the community folks. And uh, a lot of that takes place, uh, like Leslie said, just happens organically also, Jamie, uh, at community events, whether it be a health fair or their organization is doing a fundraiser. Uh, there's always something going on in my community. So I, I let 
folks know that are interested or potentially interested, you might want to attend this event. I'll be there. Uh, if I'm not there, these are some of the folks I can connect you with that will be there. So that's kind of what liaisons do. We make that connection, but it's really going back to just showing up in community or, or finding a liaison to, to help you facilitate that. And uh, we now have a track record, not only with CIT, but working in community with CBPR for almost 13 years now. So we can refer back to wonderful examples of projects and partnerships at work. And we can also talk about partnerships that didn't work and what did we learn from that? So uh, we now have a lot of examples that we can work with because we have a wonderful history now and inroads we have made into community that did take time in the beginning, but we've, we've made those inroads, we've nurtured them, and we have very strong community partners now within my community. Um, so, we, so we've talked at this point about, well, how do you even find a partnership? How do you find that partner, um, either as an academic or community member? Let's shift a little bit now to, okay, I found you. How do we actually develop a relationship and partnership? Um, and, and so Lorenzo and Leslie, in particular, we were interested in hearing, do you have a really good example, a story you could tell us of a partnership that got off the ground really well? And what happened? What, can you talk us through kind of what that process looked like of developing a partnership? So I'll go back to, to Leslie on that. Do you have a story for us? Yeah, sure. Thanks for asking. Um, one of the first CBPR partnerships I did was, um, again, with uh, older, or older um, LGBTQ folks in the Capitol Hill area. Um, and we were trying to understand what um, older uh, LGBTQ folks need to age in place safely. Um, and the way that we, um, we, we, we the, the, the question came to, came to us from a community organization. And so that was, that was really helpful. And then um, amongst the people, myself and the community organization, we identified folks that would be part of our partnership. Um, one of the first things we did in our very first meeting was we actually, it was our second meeting, we identified some core values. What are our core values? When you think about the um, community that you're, you're working with and where you want to impact, you really have to define, you know, we were, we had to define, are we talking about this particular neighborhood of Capitol Hill? Or are we going to expand larger? Are we talking about um, only older LGBTQ folks, or are we talking about older and younger LGBT folks? So really having those hard discussions. And um, we asked the, the, the group a question, um, tell me what, you're, what you really would like to get out of this in the end. Like if this project was finished, where, where do you see it? What does it look like? Um, and that helped us to understand if we were all at the same point you know, wanting the same thing. Um, and if we were all kind of um, in it for the same thing. Um, and if we weren't, that's okay. We learned right up front. So we, we it was the exercise was called, um, what's your wildly audacious, audacious goal for this project? And um, we learned a lot. And then we actually, because you don't, we had to, we had to understand who was at the table. We actually talked about, tell us your coming out story. And we had folks, we had allies, we had a, uh, a woman who was not um, lesbian, lesbian, gay, bi, trans, but her mother was. And, and so we really had to generate that sense of trust, that sense of um, feeling comfortable to talk about your own lived experience and why you're at the table. And I think those really helped when we, when we ran into some rough times um, a couple years into the project, we were able to go back to our core values and say, this this, we don't want to make this, we don't want to go with this funder because it doesn't match up with our core values. Getting some really good questions in the chat. So if it's okay, I'd like to um, spend a little bit of time on, on these questions and maybe you can sort of tell your, um, your story in the context of answering uh, these questions, uh, Lorenzo. And so, so I see two really good ones here. I'm going to start with Lisa's because I think this is important. 
She says, what were some of the terms folks have used for when they reach out looking for partners? Do we say, I'm looking for a stakeholder, I'm looking for a partner, I'm looking for an advisory panel member? What, if we, what words should we use? And language is important. Uh, so, so what have you seen, Lorenzo, around kind of well-received language and terminology? My experience has been uh, just basically that, a community partner. But what does that mean, a community partner or just partnership? So that's where the principles of CBPR come into play uh, because we're approaching uh, researchers that I work with are, are all understand CBPR. Community may not. So that takes a lot of education, sometimes on my part, uh, or bringing the par potential partners together and working through what is CBPR and how is this going to benefit not only the partnership, but most importantly, from the community's perspective, how is this going to benefit my community and what is going to be left behind? Uh, and that's been an issue that's been kind of ongoing. That's where some of the mistrust has been. But with CBPR, there, we do address you know, data dissemination, who owns that, uh, how can we move, be, continue to work together, even though the partnership uh, program or project may have ended, how do we continue uh, moving forward or uh, potentially working together. So just, uh, I think partnership is a good word. Uh, it's very understandable. Um, it depends on the organization too. Most of the organizations I've always worked are all community-based, uh, serving the community in one sense or another, but they're all located in community and have existed for quite some time. So uh, that's also helpful too. Um, we have another really great question here around partnership development resources outside of the metro area. And so what are, how, if I wanted to in, engage with communities in rural and mountain areas, what are some special considerations there? So anyone wanna take that one on? I can, Leslie again, um, I'll keep it short. Um, there, We do have community research liaisons through the CCTI program that are um, somewhere on very Eastern rural or frontier Colorado, and also in the San Luis Valley. Um, and there's also a, a, a group of folks called regional health connectors that are very similar in a lot of ways to what the community research liaisons are. So they may be, any of us might be an ability to help connect. Um, and I also think for, I see the question, um, what are the special challenges and needs? When I'm talking with our liaisons on the high plains or uh, in the valley, it's really understanding where they, what's happening in the community and then trying to offer resources. Um, for example, I have a, um, an organization I've not done research with, but we've really connected um, in, um, in Chafee County. It's another, it's an LGBT organization and they don't have the providers down there that we have. Um, and I'm able to be that liaison to connect them with providers, to connect them with resources. Um, we had a provider do a training down in their area. Um, so for me, again, it's building those relationships. And I often, I spend a lot of time connecting somebody with somebody, right? I'm sort of the middleman to do the, the relationship building. And um, I'm happy to do that if I have a conversation with you to begin with, and I feel like it's genuine. Um, we talk a lot about us being, um, you know, connect, connect, and a lot of us, it's not, you don't have to have the title of community research liaison to be a connector. So many people are great connectors, um, but just use it, leveraging your, your power or privilege. And we all have that to a, a different degree in different areas of our lives to help make connections. Uh, so I'm going to turn it over to Don to do some synthesis and wrapping up today. And if you do need to go, there is a link in the chat to our evaluation. And so please do uh, do the evaluation for today. Um, I really appreciate everyone's input and participation. So I'll turn it over to Don to wrap us up. All right. Thanks. Wow. I definitely think we made the right decision to make this a two-parter. Um, there's just been so much good discussion here, and um, I really appreciate uh, Lorenzo, Leslie, Jamie, and Ramona, and um, all the stuff that you've, you've brought to the table here. So I'm just going to identify some things that I heard. Um, so I really, uh, this notion that 
um, I'm not sure this was the word that came out, but persistence. And um, as you're developing relationships and, um, you know, I think that goes along with the notion that um, Lorenzo identified of, of showing up and showing up frequently. And, you know, it's not like you're just gonna go, go into a community once and, you know, immediately, you know, walk away with, with the connections and the relationships, but be persistent, um, uh, keep reaching out. Uh, I thought that I really liked um, Jamie's identification of just, you know, kind of this notion of trusting the process, trusting your relationships and, and really um, holding one another accountable. I always tell folks that um, I always know that, that I'm starting to be on the right track of having, having a good relationship with, with community members when they can start calling me on my stuff, um, you know, and really holding me accountable because they, they feel like, okay, we can trust this guy enough that we can challenge him a little bit. Um, that's really, really important. Um, so that's always a, a marker for me. And something that I also wrote down as, as folks were talking about working through people as connectors and that sort of thing. And Leslie kind of identified put her finger on this in terms of, you know, I have to meet with somebody first and make sure that they're coming from the right place. And if, if I feel like I can trust them, then I can, it, it's like a chain of trust. Um, that first you establish a trusted relationship with somebody who can make those connections and then they can introduce you to um, people that they know. And that, that's so, so important. Um, and I finally, just this notion of core values and um, you know, not being shy about wading into that territory early on, um, but kind of having the courage to do that. You know, why are we really here? Is this really, you know, is this really, are we all headed towards the same, you know, North Star? Um, super, super important. So, um, yeah, that's that was my summary. Uh, again, um, we're recording this. Um, we'll make that available uh, so that um, if there's things you want to rewatch or if you want to share this with colleagues, you can do that. Um, like we mentioned, the uh, second part of this will be coming up in March. We'll bring in some, some other voices to um, address this topic. Um, please, please, please take a moment to uh, fill out that evaluation from our talk today. We, we take those very seriously. We look at them. We try to be responsive to the needs of folks that are showing up. And um, thanks, Victoria, for putting that into uh, the chat so that we've got that available. Um, don't get too windblown today. Um, stay safe out there. And uh, we'll look forward to seeing you all back in March. And I, I just want to note that um, there was a really good question from uh, Kristen Meadow in the chat on uh, examples of texts that have been used to write up a community engagement plan, um, how much participants are paid. I'd like to put that on our list for what we talk about in part two, because it's a big question and a really good one. Great point. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for flagging that, Bethany. All right. Well, thank you, everyone. Have we mentioned the evaluation? <laughs> uh, thank you again to our panelists, uh, and uh, we'll hopefully see you in March, and Happy New Year, everyone. Yeah. Thanks for joining us.